Galvango. Galvango. Uh, oops. Uh. <laughs>for those of you guys that don't know I've been in EMS for about seven years now um, after going through the EMT program the paramedic program and being a TA for one of the local EMT programs I thought I would do a video on what supplies that you actually need to get through them and what tips and resources that I can give you that I learn um, to help you better get through it so I will split this video into two parts one's gonna be for EMT students and the other parts gonna be for paramedic students that way, for those of you that are already EMTs and you're trying to get into a paramedic program or you're already there, um, you can just go ahead and skip ahead. And then for those of you that are looking to become EMT students or you're in a program, um, you can just go ahead and watch the full thing. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so starting off with the EMT portion, just like any class, you're going to want to have a notebook. Um, I think the only difference that in the way I take notebook note notes. <laughs> the only difference in the way I take notes compared to other people um, is that I like to write the page number along with whatever notes that I'm taking even during a lecture. Um, I do my best to follow along in the book and that way I can always refer back to the notes and then back to the page number um, so that I'm not lost looking through the index or looking through like just trying to skim the pages looking through the book to find where I want to be. Um, so along with a notebook, a binder. Um, for me, I liked to have a binder that had a bunch of these little tabs so that I could separate them by blocks. Um, between EMT and medical school, you're still going to have your respiratory block, your circulatory cardiac block. Um, you're going to have your trauma block. So even between EMT and medic, you're going to want to separate those things. So that's what I did. Um, the next thing I did, I don't have the EMT stuff because this was a while ago, but I have the medic stuff and I just did like the block exam and then all the quizzes, block exam, all the quizzes. And I would write that down. Um, I still have the syllabus, but I would just still do this on my own because I think like halfway through the syllabus wasn't updated and um, I just wanted to know exactly where I was. I would also write down the scores that I got on these ones because that way you don't have to look through the computer, you don't have to ask your teacher, you can know exactly where you are grade wise if it's just based off your tests. Um, it's not a class that you really have homework in, so unless you have like worksheets or whatever to do, so it was easier to kind of know your grade based off just your exam. So then the next thing I have is I got this little pouch. I don't remember where, probably Target. That's the place I love to shop. Um, in here just has markers, pens, pencils, everything. Um, we'll actually look at a few different things that I suggest are necessi necessities right now. So I would suggest highlighters are a necessity. Um, maybe not a whole color pack, but definitely at least yellow. Um, but if you're into learning by organization with different colors and different um, blocks as you saw that I did, like just different things, um, I would suggest maybe getting a whole color pack. And same thing with Expo markers. There's two reasons why you would want Expo markers. So first reason is even though obviously they're probably going to be in the classroom somewhere, sometimes they're out of ink, sometimes the teachers buy their own and hold them hostage. Um, so you're not going to have them. And then on top of it, like I offered <laughs> markers to my teacher sometimes because um, they were all out of ink. So that's one reason. The second reason is most people that I know will get a whiteboard this size from like Target or Office Depot or something and then write protocols or write things repetitively and then erase them and write it repetitively and erase it and that repetition gets you like you just get things at that point that's kind of a silly way to explain it but repetition is one of the best ways to remember things so that and then drawing pictures with different colors like drawing a trace of blood throughout the heart you can draw your heart with this and then you know you have your colors for your oxygenated blood and your deoxygenated blood so I have a lot more colors in that little pouch thing but you know just as an example I would say get some expo markers. 
Next thing that's required are um, these guys, pens. So blue and black ink are for sure required. You need to think about like the fact that you're going to be filling out legal documents at some point. Even if all your charting is on online on the computer or tablet, you're still going to at some point need, need pens. So have blue or black in your uniform, have like two that match and look good. Um, but this little guy I got from a fire inspector and he's just like a cute little black ink pen, cheap blue ink. And then I like using a bunch of different colors as I just said. So, um, some people, some programs require red, um, not all, but writing in red, writing in green, different colors separates things. And you also tend to remember them more. And then last but not least with your writing utensils is going to be your pencils. I like mechanical. Um, so I have my backup lead and erasers. And then just like in life, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. So I would suggest getting a big eraser. Next protocol book. I not, I know not all states carry these. Um, so, but I do know that most can be found online. Like, so when I went through EMT school, I didn't know what Quizlet was. So I always use note cards. I didn't find out what Quizlet was until like last year, um, when I started medical school, but I still used these in medical school when I used Quizlet. Um, you can wrap them with anything or get one of these fancy little things to keep them from floating around in your backpack. But at the end of the day, I think note cards are beneficial to everyone. Even people who don't normally use note cards, I've heard people be like, yeah, I use them for school because they worked. A lot of what we do is broken down into different, like organized into different blocks. So I think that is why note cards work for everybody in this specific like program. The next thing that is required in any EMT program, whether it's provided for you or you have to buy it yourself, is a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff, also known as a sphygmomanometer. Um, most people don't call it that. So with your uh, stethoscope, you don't have to get an expensive one. This is a Littman Classic 2 that I got from somebody when I started medical school, but you don't need an expensive one. Like I've seen doctors wear like the $20 stethoscopes. You don't need an expensive one. Um, so especially on a, on an EMT budget. So the biggest thing I've seen when we teach as a TA, when we teach people how to take, um, vitals is they will be like, they'll be auscultating and especially for blood pressure, they like, don't hear anything. And it's like, well, this is on wrong. So when you put these on, make sure they're on right. Just like AirPods or headphones or whatever, you know, the ones that go in your ear, these need to be facing forward so that they can hit your eardrum so that you can hear. Um, so you put these on and then this guy, the head of the stethoscope, it actually goes both sides because there's a lot of stethoscopes that can be used like cardiac stethoscopes or ones for peds, pediatrics. Um, that are dual sided and you can hear different things so you need to make sure it's on the right side and whether it's a specialty stethoscope or not they both they all do this except maybe the disposable ones but um make sure it's on the right side and then very lightly you can tap it to make sure it's on the right side if you tap it the other way when it's turned you'll know it's on the wrong side um, but just be very careful when you're doing it, especially on a uh, one like this. Um, and then a little tip that I learned recently is you can actually do this when you're auscultating like lung sounds and you'll be able to hear them better because you're not having that resistance. You're creating less resistance, if that makes sense, by stretching it out. The last thing on here is I just got these little charms. I don't remember if I got them on Amazon or the actual med charm website and these are just so that i can tell mine apart because i have a basic black one um and that i can tell that it's mine um and then next is the blood pressure cuff so make sure it's on correctly make sure where it says artery is where the artery is um and then this guy is actually to clip this thing on and then when it's on somebody's arm, you don't have to like hold it. 
Um, if that thing is, if this little guy is broken for whatever reason, you can just clip it on here, which ideally you're not going to want them wearing a sweater or something, but um, the seat belts of the gurney, you can clip it on there, whatever works so that you can just, this so that you can use it. Um, and then make sure this guy isn't broken. Blood pressures are super, manual blood pressures are super important. Everyone thinks that when you get a monitor, you no longer have to take manual blood pressures. That is not true at all. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of MAs and CNAs lose, and even EMTs, lose the ability to be able to take a manual blood pressure well, whether it's palpated or auscultated. And one thing is your monitor, if that pressure is so low or so high, it may not even read. And then on top of it, what if it gives you a wrong reading? One of the things that a doctor told me that if you ever get a blood pressure that is wildly low or wildly high, you need to make sure to check it with a manual. So you need to know that skill probably forever, <laughs> um, as long as you're in the medical field. So don't lose that skill and don't scoff at manual blood pressures once you get a monitor and you can take um, automated ones. Pressure parameters you have to have to do certain skills or obviously give certain nits. So you need to be able to have a blood pressure. Um, and then last but not least are your skill sheets. You don't need to provide these for yourself. Um, your school will provide these. You will get a packet with a bunch of skills. Most of them you have 10 minutes to do them, to complete them. Um, and in them they have everything and it has like what the examiner is supposed to say and it has your critical fails. So like let's say you kill it in a skill and you hit a critical criteria like not saying BSI scene safety. You just fail that skill. No matter how well you did that, if you hit a critical, you fail because those criticals represent something in real life that is potential life threat to either you or the patient or your crew. It's a life safety situation. Um, always bring your skill book to school whether you're gonna perform those skill like it's a skill day or not um, because I think staying after class and practicing skills or asking your instructors or your TAs on things you're gonna want this on hand um the book that you get is something that has to be filled out by the end of the program but if you want to practice these with your classmates you can always find these skill sheets on the national registry website um and i'll put that below if you guys want that but um i would say this is a required element to bring to class Every day. So the things that I would say um, for medic that I didn't cover in EMT are only a few things. Um, obviously everything's pretty redundant when you go to school and everything you need, but I would say the books that I used so much. We'll start with my favorite is Emergency Pathophysiology, Clinical Applications for Pre-Hospital Care by Samuel Galvango. Galvango? Galvango? Uh, um, so this book actually, I got off Amazon because my partner was like, oh, you can borrow mine. But I'm the type of person to, as you saw from my notes, to just highlight, which I didn't highlight because the pages are thin, but write, underline, just like mark up. I got this on off Amazon. I want to say it's like $40, maybe. Um, don't quote me on that. But favorite book. It is down and dirty on patho and then obviously incorporates meds and it's, it's for EMS. It's for pre-hospital paramedicine. So must have in my book but not required on the syllabus. Um, second must have in my book that is not required is the rapid interpretations of EKGs by Dale Dubin. This is the sixth edition because this actually was a hand-me-down. The same partner gave it to me. Um, because honestly his use was up for it but um, cardiac was a really hard block for me um, I, it still is I'm still an internship so it is I would say I'm still learning and thankfully my preceptor is extremely intelligent especially about cardiac he's such a nerd on it so um, <laughs> I think that I ended up with the right preceptor but um, must have not on the syllabus and then last but not least um, this is not something you can buy. Um, I would suggest you make it. I got it again as a hand-me-down, but it is saved me so much. 
So it is something my partner gave me that he got from somebody else that they made um, years ago, 2008. Um, and it is, it has, oopsie. It has all the different rhythms. I mean, not all of them, but most of them are in here. And then you flip to that portion and then it's like a description. And then there's ones where it has, um, let's do this one. It has like one pictures, what the rhythm's gonna look like. And then of course I read notes because I'm extra. So I wrote notes on top of it. And this is obviously not something you can buy, but I would suggest making something like this. Um, aside from like your regular school binder, it is a cardiac binder. Um, that actually I've been going over so much <laughs> to be honest um and then just a few other things I the school gave me some of these but I also went online and got my own there's some med math practice you can just google them even nursing ones work um and I would just put questions and then the next page would be the answers um the different worksheets I made different conversion worksheets the school didn't give me this I made this on my own I also worked full-time I worked three jobs during didactic and went to school so that was rough um, and then obviously everyone's gonna make their own notes this is an example of my love for color the last things I'm gonna suggest are again not requirements but probably the best things I discovered like I said my EMT portion I didn't know what Quizlet was when I went through EMT school. Thank God I knew what it was when I went through medical school. There's a website called Life in the Fast Lane. This is perfect for cardiology. My preceptor quizzes me all the time on these. I'll link that below. But that is one website that I suggest next to Quizlet that you use that um, like saved me. And then the last thing that I did for medic school um, that was different for EMT school is for protocols. I rewrote my protocols. So I wrote them like there's a lot of extra bluff, a lot of extra words in protocols and I just rewrote them so that I understood them. Um, that's pretty much it I would say to help you and the supplies. Um, majority are the, of these are necessary supplies and then a couple of them are add-ons. Um, but with what I gave you, that's probably next to your school program stuff that they give you. That's probably all you need to get through your programs. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. Thanks for sticking through that. I know that was kind of a long video, um, but I would just wanted to get all the supplies and like tips and resources out there. Um, if you guys still have questions, go ahead and message me on Instagram or Twitter or leave it in the comments below. Um, I think we covered everything, so I hope this video helped someone and I hope it helped people better prepare for um, what they're getting into. Um, join me next time on my next video. Thanks for watching.